Would you want me to talk right now? Say hello and good morning. It's good to see all of you. Like Kirby over there, walking along, enjoying life, loving the Lord and Brian. He's enjoying. We're glad you're here to worship with us. If you're joining us online, we're glad that you're tuning in to as well. As we get ready to praise the Lord, let's stand together and let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. Lord, I love you and I praise your holy name. Lord, we come before you today to exalt the name of Jesus Christ, the name above every name. So Lord, may you be lifted high this morning. May our focus be solely on you. May we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
the river, down to the river to pray. Let's get washed by the water, washed by the water, rise up in amazing grace. Let's go down, down, down to the river.
It's who I am. You may be seated. months ago, um, I was working on my Bible study. We have a women's Bible study on Tuesday mornings here at the church, and um, if you'd like to join us, we'd love to have you. Um, but I was doing my study for the week at home, and studying on Joshua and um, the Battle of Jericho, and then um, them conquering the Canaanites, and I was just reading it, and I couldn't, I couldn't read it all, because it really started to just hurt my heart of all of the destruction that was going on. And, and it would talk about how they were led into battle and that everything in their path was destroyed. Every living thing, man, woman, child, animal, that, that everything was conquered and destroyed. And it just, just kept on going on. And I'm like, I can't even finish this because it just saddened me so much. And so... I was just like, when it came Tuesday morning, I'm like, I'm just not even going to go. I didn't finish it. And in all honesty, there were some other things that were going on in my life that I was just kind of upset with God because I'm like, I don't understand why you're letting these things happen. Why is this going on in my life? And I was reading that and I thought, God, why did you provide them the equipment to hurt all of these people? And I'm like, I'm just not going to go. I I'm just, I'm not going to go. And my son Christian goes with me. He's four. And, um, he was like, Mom, we've got to go to Bible study. And I was like, Christian, Mommy just doesn't feel like going today. And he's like, I want to go see Kylie because the craft in Scalicia comes, and Kylie is his best buddy, and he gets to spend time with her. So he was not going to let it go. And I'm like, fine. If you've got a four-year-old and they throw a fit sometimes, you just throw in the towel, and you know, like, it's just, it is what it is. And so I'm like, fine, I'm going to go just to quit your fussing. So I went, and... While we were in Bible study, I still, like, my heart was kind of hard, to be honest with you. And I was just frustrated with God. And I don't remember exactly what one of the questions were, but somebody brought up the fact that they had a hard time with dealing with what I was dealing with, that God was providing them a way to destroy all of these people. And I was like, oh, good, well, I'm not the only one. But then we continued to talk about it. And they started talking about all the evil things that the Canaanites were doing to these children and that they were offering their children up as living sacrifices and just all the evil that was going on. And I thought, okay, God, I kind of see, I, I get it. And it kind of was like, I, I remember calling Paul afterwards. I'm like, I'm glad I went to Bible study today. And, you know, there are things that were going on in that time that I still don't have answers to, and I don't understand, you know, sometimes why, why God swoops in and he saves the day, and sometimes he allows horrific things to happen, and I know it's our own fault because of our sin, but I struggle with not understanding things. But um, in that time in my life, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 kept coming to me, and it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways, submit to him, and he will direct your paths. So no matter what is going on in your life, even if we don't understand what's going on, if we submit to God, he's going to direct us. He sent his son to the cross to die for us because he loves us and he wants good things for us. So as we come into this time of communion, I just um, ask that you reflect on things and trust in God and his will and let him guide your path. Will you pray with me? Father God, I thank you for just loving us as much as you do. I thank you for sending your son to the cross to die for us. Lord, sometimes we don't understand, and we never will understand all of the things, but your plan is perfect, and if we will just submit to you and trust in you, Everything will be made right one day. Lord, we just thank you for all the wonderful things that you have provided for us. 
Open our hearts and our ears to receive your message this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father. Son and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. day, uh, for your word that you've spoken to us through, through your Holy Spirit that continues to convict and lead us, and I thank you for giving us this opportunity this morning to come together as your people and to encourage one another and to glorify you with, with, our, with our voices and song and with our hearts as we just cling to you and look to you and draw close to you and ask you to just draw us closer into your love and that we will abide in that love. I lift up our children as they're going to be dismissed to Children's Church in a moment, that they will hear your word and they will know it is for them. And I ask this now in Jesus' name, amen. Sixth grade and below, you can go. The rest of us, will we turn in our Bibles to Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Starting today, last year, in the beginning of the year, we went through the Beatitudes. This year, we're going to go through the Sermon on the Mount. It's a good way to make me behave in such a tense climate out there in the world today. Just keep me on target. Make me go through the Sermon on the Mount. I know that you will be fed as we go through it, as we hear Jesus break down what really matters in life. If you could take one thing out of the Bible, say you, you could memorize a section of the Bible and it would just lead you into the course of the life that you would always want to drive for and strive for and live for God, it would be the Sermon on the Mount. So hear God's Word today as it's spoken to you 
and though it is for you. Last week we acknowledged uh, what a mess the world was in and we kind of laughed it off, said, oh, we're over with 2020. Hey, welcome to 2021. Told you it's a mess. And it's not just a mess, it, it's evil. The world is just evil. Just admit it, realize it, know it, quit thinking it's something other than evil. The world is evil. It's full of deceit and manipulation, and it's difficult to see who's even telling the truth in this world because there's many that are always twisting things for their own agendas, and agendas, yes, they are abundant, and society is selfish, and those who say, be at peace, pour fuel on all the fires going on out there, and it's pitiful. Politicians, they pounce on every tragedy as an opportunity to promote their own policies, and the judgmental shaming and blaming that's everywhere, I'm just plain tired of it. Fair is forgotten, consistency is contaminated, and many are no different than the world. And they add to the darkness with all their lies and with all their lawlessness and all their lashing out. But be encouraged today. Be encouraged. For we will not spend our time together, I promise you this morning, wading through this world's wickedness. Instead, we'll savor the salvation that sets us apart as children of God. It sets us apart from the sick sadness that surrounds us in this world. See, Jesus made it very clear. He said, you are not of this world. Even as I am not of this world. And since we're not of this world, Jesus said, the world, guess what? They're going to hate us. He prayed for us. His prayer was not that we be taken out of the world, but that we be protected from the evil one. And the Father has answered that prayer, we are saved and we are sanctified and now Jesus has sent us into the world, not to be of the world, but to be set apart of, from the world. And we're told in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, to be the salt of the earth. He says, he's talking to, to us, the church, his disciples, you are the salt of the earth, but what good is it if salt has lost its flavor. I don't know about you, when I pour salt on something, I expect some action. I expect something to come to life. Don't give me any popcorn with no salt on it. There's no point in eating popcorn if it doesn't have salt. You expect it to have its saltiness, to, to have some pop, but yet you never walk away after having a good old buttery, salty, yet crisp, bag of popcorn, bucket of popcorn, however much popcorn you can take in. You never walk away and say, well, that was good salt. No, you say, that was good salt. But you say, that was good popcorn, because they just add a little pop. The salt did. So, how can you make it salty again if it loses its flavor? You can't. It'll be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless, and you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp, then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. And in the same way, let your good deeds shine for all to see so that everyone may praise your heavenly Father. See, Jesus describes us first as the salt of the earth. You are what is poured out on this earth and gives some, some action, some life. You're what, what livens it up. 2,000 years ago, people valued salt a lot more than we do today. Salt was often referred to then as white gold. Salt was valuable because of its ability to preserve. The people Jesus was talking to in Matthew chapter 5 didn't have refrigerators at home. They didn't have freezers. They didn't have a way to store their meat in this cool environment. So whenever they butchered meat or they caught fish and they wanted to preserve it, they would pack the meat in salt and the salt would draw the moisture out of the meat that would cause it to decay and riot. The salt would work its way into the meat and it would preserve the meat so it would be good for a while and not decompose. But if the salt lost its flavor, it lost its power. If the salt lost its purity, it lost its power and it was worthless. And just as salt must remain pure to preserve and save, we must remain pure if we plan to preserve people with the truth of God. So stay pure, church. 
stay pure. The, the people Jesus was speaking to knew all about salt that had lost its purity. Most of their salt probably came from the Dead Sea, which wasn't the best of salt, which was full of impurities, which would cause the salt to quickly lose its flavor and its power. And Jesus' message to us today, church, in 2021 is don't lose the power. How do you not lose the power? You don't lose your purity. You stay pure. You stay abiding in the Father through the Son. You stay in the love of God and you will remain in the power of God and you will remain in the purity of God. See, there must be some that stick out in this world because the world is full of countless contaminants. Sin is everywhere. But we must flee from sin. We must stay away from sin. And Jesus Christ is the one that purifies the, the heart. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave Himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness. You heard that word this week? Lawlessness? I did. But He came to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for Himself a people for His own possession that belong to Him. That means we belong to Him who are zealous for good works. Not to be a part of the darkness. Not to be a part of violent works or bad works or judgmental works or shaming or blaming, but are zealous for good works. Now understand, our good deeds do not save us. Do not walk away in thinking that you can go out and do enough good to save you. You can't do enough good to save you. You've already messed up enough that your good can never outweigh your bad. But you can make one good decision that will overcome all your bad decisions, and that's to accept the love that God has for you and His Son, Jesus Christ. And that is the only way that we are purified from all of our unrighteousness. It's only through the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us on the cross. And when we put our faith in that blood, when we receive that love of God, we can abide in that love. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because all He's done for you. What has He done for you? He gave His own and only Son on the cross to die for our sins. So let your life now be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that God will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship Him. Don't copy. Do not copy the behavior and customs of this world. Who cares what the world says is acceptable and that's the way you should live and that's what you should do? No, it matters what God says. So let God transform you into a new person. How? By changing the way you think. You know a good way to be transformed by God is open His Word and shut off your television. Quit letting people on television and on Facebook and Twitter and wherever else they have now. I don't even know all the channels you can pop into and get brainwashed, but there's several. Now you folks online, just hang with us a little bit before you ban everything, okay? <laughs> and open up the Word of God and let Him transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is perfect and pleasing. And many of us think, well, we can't stay pure because we think we have to do it on our own. We can't stop being negative. We can't Quit gossiping, we, we can't stop cursing, we can't stop looking at pornography, we can't stop lying, we can't stop yelling at our spouse and kids. And God says this this morning, give me your life, let me transform you into a new person, receive the love that I have for you, abide in my love, and I promise you it will change the way you think. Quit thinking of yourself as an out of control, rabid animal, and start thinking of yourself as a child of God, as a carrier of the life breath of God. And you will become a new person. See, you and I were created in the image of God. We are His children. Therefore, we must control our hands and what they do and our eyes and what they take in and our mouth and what we say and our hearts and what we let possess them. Why? Because we're the salt of the earth. And the salt must remain pure. How do we remain pure? We abide in the love of Jesus Christ. And when we catch ourselves losing our saltiness, our flavor, our purity, we must repent and turn our eyes to Jesus. 
this country isn't pure. I think we were in some deceit ourselves thinking it was. It's not pure. Why? It refuses to repent. That's the truth. Whenever this country is ready to repent, repent of our wickedness, repent of the same things the Canaanites were doing, offering their children as living sacrifices, until then, we can't call ourselves pure. Now the church, the church is pure. And the church is to be pure even in a contaminated world. For the church to be the church, for one to be a part of the church, now this building is not the church, this is a facility, you are the church. And for you to be the church and called the church, you must repent of your sins and turn to God. And it doesn't mean you're perfect and you always do everything right, but it does mean that you're sorry for your sins and that you've been made perfect by the blood of Jesus. Resurrection power, you're being led by His Holy Spirit to live a new life. And the truth is that now we live for the glory of God. And when we make a mistake and when we sin, we turn away from it. We say we're sorry. We do our best just to look forward and say, God, lead me because I keep on messing up when I try to lead myself. Let me be your salt on this earth. Verse 14, you are the light of this world like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. You stick out. Jesus is telling his disciples, People are seeing you. They're watching you. They know you belong to me. They're taking note of the way you live. Church, people are watching you. They're taking a look at what you're posting. They're, they're seeing what you're saying. Like a city on a hill that cannot be hidden, you stick out because you set the example. You set the example for someone, someone I promise you. And with that being said, we must be the example and not the exception. I want to repeat that. Be the example and not the exception. We must be the example of what putting in an honest day's work looks like. We must be the example of what godly conversation is. Be the example of what living within our means is. Be the example of living with a servitude attitude. Paul wrote to the church, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Paul knew that he set the example and he told the church to just follow his example. I wish I could confidently tell you the same. Uh, drive like me, for I drive the way Jesus would, would have you to drive. I can't say that to you. Uh, it'd be like me as you deal with rude people because I always do it correctly. I can't tell you that. I don't always set the example when, with patience or with gentleness and humbleness and love. I made a mistake this week that left a mark. Have you ever done that? A mistake that leaves a mark? Maybe some of you men would identify with this, but it, I wasn't a good example. I was using the wrong tool for a job. You ever done that? There was a job that called for a reciprocating saw, but the reciprocating saw was upstairs. I didn't want to climb up the ladder to get the reciprocating saw, so I grabbed the jigsaw. Jigsaw is meant to be on a flat surface, going like this. Reciprocating saw is meant for use both hands. I used the jigsaw coming down. I cut a piece of drywall, just a little bit too big. I need to take some of it off. So I'm going to take that jigsaw and knock that off. As I came down through there, I'll spare you the details, but I got into my finger. Oh, yeah, it hurt. It did. It was ugly. It, it, it scared me a bit. I have to tell you that. I, I got I called for Aurora. She didn't answer the phone, and I hopped in the Little Ranger. I told you a few weeks ago that the previous owner told me he never had it over 53. I had it over 53 coming out of that driveway. I'll tell you that. <laughs> it was fishtailing around, a little turbo diesel oh, coming in, coming on, blowing black smoke, rolling coal. Now, thankfully, I let go of the trigger in time that it didn't go too deep. But it did. The, the, the jigsaw has a pretty, uh, it's got a blade that's kind of ugly. And I'm going to tell you, it hurts right now. I, I was putting on my sweater this morning, and I hit it on a door jam. And it hurt. I made a mess. I had to clean and bandage this thing like a couple times a day. Aurora says or I'll get infection. But I promise you, I promise you, I will not use a jigsaw again for a job that's calling for a reciprocating saw. I won't do it. You, can't, you, could, you could be at my house. Say, oh, Stephen, just grab that jigsaw. I said, no, I'm not doing it. 
No, I'll grab it. No, you're not. I'll punch you if you do. You let that down. I won't let you. Why? Because I know the pain that it could cause. I know the hurt that it can cause and the mess it can make. I mean, there was, there was blood all over the newly... Darren just poured that porch two weeks ago. I got blood all over it. And the same is with our sin. When our eyes are open to the damages that it causes and the hurt and the pain and the impurity... It hurts us enough to where we turn from it and we repent. And repentance, 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 repentance. That is the example that needs to be seen today. People have seen plenty of excuses. People have seen plenty of things trying to be making wrongs right. But what people really need to see is somebody stand up and say, I was wrong. And I am sorry. And we all have areas in our life where we can say this. We don't need to apply. Don't apply this to somebody else. We need to turn from our selfish sin and turn to God's love. That releases us from the punishment of sin and bondage of sin and delivers us to live new lives for the glory of God. Our world needs godly examples. They need some light. We have plenty of bad examples in society. We need to know what it looks like to honor God at work and at school and at home and in the game and in traffic and on Facebook. We know what it looks like not to. We need to see what it looks like to do it, to honor God. So how about some godly people, some godly men and women and children rising above the darkness of this world and shining a light right now for Jesus Christ? An example of what living in the light looks like. For you were once full of darkness, but now you have the light from the world. So live as people of light. For this light within you produces only what is good and what is right and what is true. If it's not good, right, and true, it's not coming from the light. It's coming from the darkness. Be the light. Produce only what is good, right, and true. Smithville, you are the light of the world. Welcome place. You're the light of the world. People are watching. You can't be hidden. When I see you, I see what is good, right, and is true. I see you uh, preparing meals for those who are grieving or fighting this virus or trying to recover from something. Uh, Teach energetic children who try your patience and wear you out. You, You give your best efforts and set the example. You make sure every kid in this community has Christmas. You encourage and welcome your brothers and sisters battling addiction. You know how good it feels to sit with people who are battling addiction and confidently tell them, oh, come come and, and be a part of, this, of the welcome place. I promise you, you'll be welcome. And know with confidence all my friends will. Last week I was sitting with a group battling addiction and I looked at them and I was trying to help them find churches. And then a bunch of them were in the Mitchell area. I was saying, go, go down to Tulip Street there. It's close by and, and it'll be a great church and I promise you they'll welcome you. And somebody said, they'll welcome you? I said, I won't send you somewhere that won't welcome you because that's not the church if they won't welcome you. You help mend broken families by being a friend. You show up early to the welcome place to make others feel welcome. You come midweek to practice for worship service, which I loved all the acapella in there today. That was like, uh, I love, I know that's your roots, Kirby, and that was just really, really, really cool. You, you're generous with what God has entrusted you with. You help keep up all the grounds around here and clean the baptistry, clean the church. You check on the one who's struggling. You welcome everyone to be transformed by Jesus Christ. You set the example. You're the light of the world. So stay pure. Set the example and show the way. The way. Jesus said, no one lights a lamp and then puts it under a blanket. Instead, the, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. And in the same way, let your good deeds shine for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Notice that he tells us to let our light shine. This is probably what we're not real comfortable with. Because we don't want to bring attention to ourselves. But when you let your light shine, you're not bringing attention to yourself. You're bringing attention to God. To the love of God. 
So let your good deeds shine for all to see so that everyone can praise your heavenly Father. When we shine, God's glorified. Those lost in the darkness of this world, they see the light, and when they see the light shining, they know it's the work of God, and when they know it's the work of God, they come to God, and God speaks to your light, and He draws His children out of the darkness and into His wonderful light. I shared a story on Wednesday morning during our prayer and testimony time. Come, come Wednesday morning, 8.30, prayer and testimony time. It, it's beautiful. We sometimes give a testimony and pray. It, it's fun. On Tuesday night, I shared this story on Wednesday morning, some of it, but on Tuesday night, I took Paul and Joel to Bob Evans. It was, I'll just tell you, I'm kind of cheap. It was kids eat free night, and so, you know, Bob Evans, take that down, parents. Kids eat free Tuesday nights. A Golden Corral, I think, is one ninety nine. That's a good deal. That's when it's affordable to go Golden Corral. And I'll just go ahead and say it. Um, Golden, Bedford has the best Golden Corral in the doggone world. I mean, it, I'm claiming that. Dispute me. It don't matter. It's true. It's true. I'm claiming it. It is true. Those rolls college together in Grace in Kentucky at Kentucky Christian College. He preached at Medora Christian Church for 40 years and dad would go over and preach revivals for him about every year and I would go with dad every night. And we would go and part of the fun was being there with Stan and his boys. They were just such a good time and I always enjoyed Stan. I loved hearing his voice. It's thundering. He has that preacher voice that's like not like mine but it's thundering and he can sing real well. And I put on my mask, and I go back over to Stan. I said, I'm just going over. I know you're not supposed to, but I, I, I don't think the Lord minds. Uh, so I go, health department might mind, but the Lord doesn't. So I go over to say hi to Stan. And as I walk up, he sees me, and he becomes excited to see me. And we say hello, and he warmly, warmly greets me, he and his wife do. And, and uh, we just began to talk. And he asked me how everybody in our family is doing. And I said, oh, we're doing fine. And he said, you guys been hit with the, you know, the whole COVID conversation. He goes, man, he goes, this is my first day out. He goes, I just got over it. He said, uh, I, I had pneumonia, like double pneumonia, COVID. And he goes, and I'm not, you know, I'm not really a spring chicken here. I tell you, Steve, he said, uh, you know, I've had all these heart problems and I'm bad diabetic and all that. And he goes, I went to the hospital and it, everybody around there looked pretty rough and so I looked at my wife and I said, uh, Jane, you better get me home or I'm not going to make it. <laughs> said she took me home and wouldn't you know, she made me get up and walk. And so pneumonia didn't set up and said, I'm doing, I'm doing good. And you know what? And he starts talking louder and louder as he's talking. He said, you know what? I, I just thank God that I'm able to get out here tonight and to see you. I mean, God is so good. He's coming to tears. He says, and Steve, I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning this morning. I said, thank you, Lord, that I'm going to get to live another couple days here. He's just so happy. I mean, people around are kind of like, this guy's pretty excited that he had COVID, you know? And uh, We talked a little longer. I went back to my table. And before Stan left, he walked over to our table where the boys was. And he and Jane, they engaged the boys. When I say they engaged the boys, it wasn't, you know, sometimes people just ignore their children sitting there. They, they engaged the boys first. And they made him feel so important. And then Stan, he looked at him, and he had this cane there. And he said, boys, I want to talk to you about your papa. And, of course, they looked up and ready to hear what he had to say. Because most of their stories they hear about their papa or something kind of nuts he did the younger days. Maybe he bit a fish's head off for a dollar or, you know, <laughs> did something crazy or snap the snake's head or whatever he's always all these awesome stories and they're waiting for one of those and he just says boys he said your papa he was more than a friend he was a brother to me and then he said this he, he goes on to his testimony i love this it's like always be prepared for a reason of your hope he said boys he goes uh i got out of reform school on friday <laughs> Married this beautiful lady on Saturday, and his wife smiled. He said, I went to Bible college on Monday. He said, I got there, and the first guy on campus I met was your dad. 
Because I had no direction in my life. I, I didn't have discipline. I was always in trouble. He goes, and I wouldn't get up to go to, to, go to class. So every morning after your papa would go milk all the cows, he would go to the cafeteria and he would get the slop. And as he would walk by our trailer, he would bang on my trailer door right by our bedroom. And he would start singing. I'd hear him out there and go, Thomas, get up! It's time to give God glory! Let's go learn about the Lord's Word! And he'd just bang on the door until I acknowledged and I'd get up. See, every morning, even if I didn't have class, he would do that. He said, before long, he said, I had just this one classroom. Before long, he said, Stan, I need you to come by the, the, my dorm room tomorrow. He said, go over to his dorm room. He said, Stan, he goes, I, there's a church that needs a preacher up in the holler there, this way down there in eastern Kentucky. He said, not far from here, and you're going to go preach here tomorrow. He said, Johnny, I didn't come here to be a preacher. I came here because I didn't know what else to do. I just got out of reform school. I can't be a preacher. He said, Stan, get your Bible out. We need to get you a sermon ready. He said, so I took my Bible, and I went, and I preached the Word of God. He said, the first Sunday I went, I shared about the 23rd Psalm. He goes, that went over well, so they asked me to come back. Said so they had church every other week. So when I came back, I just did it again. They said, we'd like you to come back in a few more weeks, but you think you could do something other than the 23rd Psalm? <laughs> he said, and I did. And ever since then, I've been preaching the Word of God. 57 years, I've just been preaching the Word of God. Stan's preacher voice, it resonated throughout the restaurant. Everybody kind of just stopped eating, was listening to him. Everybody was just intrigued. I was, I was impressed that Paul and Joel knew what reform school was, personally. <laughs> but they told me they'd read about Babe Ruth, so they knew what reform school was. Stan's not had an easy life. He had a difficult childhood, evidently. You don't just get in reform school, do you? He had these two marvelous sons that were uh, older than me, and I looked up to them both. They were great men. One of them lost a battle to cancer. The other was in a motorcycle accident. Yet he still praises and thanks God. How does he do that? How does Stan continue to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world? He abides in the love of God. He abides in that love. And he's received that love. He embraces God's love. He embraces the promise of eternal life and the promise that he'll see his sons again. And until then, I promise you, you're going to find Stan preaching the truth of God's word, testifying to the goodness of God. Why? Because he's the salt of the earth. He's the light of the world. He's going to shine a light for everyone to see. The salt of the earth and the light of the world, it touched my life in a personal way on Tuesday night touched my boys in a very personal way I believe you can leave here today and like Stan you can make a difference you can be that salt that this earth needs you can be that light that needs to be seen and with your light you can show others the way the truth, and the life. The church now more than ever, now more than ever, we must stay pure. We must set the example. And we must show the way. Would you stand with me? Father, I thank you for lives like Johnny Johnson, Stan Thomas. Lives that continued to be salt of this earth and light to this world. When it wasn't popular, they continued to be salt and light. When people called them old fashioned, they continued to be salt and light. 
people said they're out of touch, they continued to be salt and light. And oh my, did it make all the difference. May your Holy Spirit speak to each heart here today and let them know that they too can make the difference. That they are the salt of this earth and the light that this world needs. May you let their light shine so others will bring glory to you and come to you. Lord, we don't need any more revelation of darkness because we've seen plenty of it. Give us the strength to be the light. With your power, continue to lead us to be the salt. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your love. Now we abide in that love as you lead us. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus said, I to the world, if you follow me, you won't have to walk in the darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. And I'll just ask you this morning, do you have the light that leads to life? And if you don't, you're in the darkness. And Jesus has come so you don't have to be in the darkness anymore. And his light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it because why? His light is the light for all of mankind. If you've not received his light, you come this eve, this after this morning is what it is. It's not this evening, it's not my time yet, but it's this morning. And it's God's time for you to have his light in you. So you come with anything as we uh, see. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again I'm forgiven because you were forsaken I'm accepted you were condemned I'm alive and well your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love. I'm accepted, you were condemned, I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, because you died and rose again.
that we have the King of Kings and Lord of Lords to lead us. We know there's no king but King Jesus, who rules over all that we have, all that we are, who has a place for us in his kingdom, a place that will bring the most glory to him, and we can be in that place right now and live for his kingdom right now. And it's here for us right now. His kingdom has come and his will will be done on this earth as in heaven. And so we thank you that we can be in that will. And we thank you that we can be in his kingdom. And we'll one day, one day, very, very soon, move to this kingdom in heaven. Our eyes cannot even comprehend as we see things what we will see in heaven. Our mind can't even conceive what you've prepared for us. And we just say thank you. Now guide us to be your salt and light in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. We'll see you later. Amen.